Hey guys, this is Neil once again, your Palawan tour guide, and on this channel we're giving you accurate, detailed, and relevant information all about Palawan, which we hope you can use next time to visit the world's most beautiful and friendliest island. And I couldn't stress that more because three days ago, Palawan again was ranked as the top island in the world by a magazine Travel and Leisure, and uh, capping its back-to-back -back win from last year. So as of date, Palawan was ranked the top island in the world for the fifth time. So, uh, yeah, I'm just proud to be living in the best island in the world, I guess. <laughs> so another weekend and another opportunity to do some exploring here in Palawan. And for today, we're scheduled to check out the, uh, the Palawan Clawless Otters. They are locally known as Dungon and they're wildly spread in Palawan, but you don't see them in the wild and we don't have a zoo. So this is really a chance I've been waiting for to see them in action. We don't have much to do for the rest of the day that leaves us with pretty much time to do random stuff along the way. So I'm thrilled and I'm excited and uh, yeah, let's get started. To see the Palawan Clawless Otters, we had to travel to Barangay Manisda, south of Puerto Princesa. And two kilometers from the highway on the right side, you find the farm of Mistiano de Moaco. May I just remind you that the otters are not open for public viewing, so that you must first secure permission from the owner, like what my friend Joel did, in order to see the otters. When we arrived, it was feeding time for the otters. Iris, the caretaker of the farm, told us that the otters were abandoned by the mother, and the local farmer brought the baby otters to Mistiano de Moaco and her husband. Both are female and are now six years old. They were supposed to be released back to the wild, but since they have become so accustomed with humans, there were concerns about their safety and how they can survive back in the wild. Up close and personal, these animals look like crossbreed between a beaver, a seal, and their long body resembles that of a mongoose. As the name suggests, they were characterized by lack of claws, and their fingers can be expanded to form something like a flipper to give them additional swimming advantage. They are known as relentless eaters and consume more than two kilos of fish on a daily basis. There you go. They're very playful. <laughs> and very fluffy. <laughs> and they have a playmate called Cassie. The dog. Since both others are girls and badly needing for some guy attention, they could be naughty sometimes. Sorry, Oh my, oh my. Very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Since we bonded with the adorable otters carrying them around like babies after they just had lunch of four kilos of fish, you can guess how bad we smell after that, right? So we decided to find a place to wash off ourselves from our stinginess. And after taking the road from hell, literally, and several near crash experience with no hope of finding a beach nearby, at last we reached these mangroves. Hey guys, we we, uh, we didn't expect to be here, to follow the road, going somewhere, trying to find a nice beach. We ended up in this really nice looking place.
Our last stop will be the Santa Lucia Hot Spring. It's about 10 minutes from the highway of Santa Lucia. The road going there is kind of bumpy, but it was just a short ride. The place is being maintained by the city government of Puerto Princesa. We were not asked to pay any entrance at all, but encouraged to give some donation. There were four pools for adults with temperature varying from hot to lukewarm and one kiddie pool. We just had enough time to take a deep here, but the experience was great to cap off our adventure for today. So after the Santa Lucia hot spring, it's time to hit the road back again. So that's about it for our adventure for today. For more information on how to travel to Palawan, don't forget to check out our website at yourpalawantoria.com. Till next weekend, guys. I'll see you. Bye.